It's getting here again. Your unfriendly neighborhood, Batman. I've got another interesting... <laughs> this thing just keeps throwing more warps and twists, and that thing's just about to fall off right there. Before I do too much more, i got to secure that, that helper magnet. Anyways, let's get to what's going on here. Um, I'm running the 8 magnet rotor with the Hall probe. Where's my zoom here? The Hall probe is on that number 2 stack. I'm only using four helper magnets on here, 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 here. If you can see that, that's kind of in an X pattern there. Helpers on five don't really do a whole lot except drop the current by about 20 milliamps on that. That's currently running at 190. I actually switched that over to a lower scale and see what happens. Yeah, so we're looking at about 190. Oh, that stopped. <laughs> now let's see if we can get this thing going. Anyway, well, let me explain what was going on. I've got a current meter measuring the current through all this load I've got. It was up at about 20 milliamps and I measured the voltage on the on the rail at about 13 and a half so current going through the load was almost yeah so 20 milliamps times 13 and a half volts came out to about 270 milliwatts and the motor was using about 230 milliamps at 11.6 volts for about 2.6 7, roughly 2.7 watts. I think that's the best ratio of power used to power, or power generated to power used, which is like 0 .100 something uh, when you make it into a decimal ratio. That's the best it's ever done so far. Still not anywhere near where we need it to be, but it's getting there. Anyways, what I did here was, after that, I didn't have the fan plugged in, this little computer fan. I just had the light, whoa, I shorted that out. Give me a second here. I'm going to put this back to where it used to be, setting the camera down for a moment here. Bumped, almost bumped itself back up 20 milliamps there. This is going back over to the 200 mark, back up to about 220, 230 where it was. We're getting our RPMs back, good. And we're back up to close to 20 milliamps. Now, what I did was I really quickly disconnected this positive lead to insert that fan the RPMs went down the current uh, current stayed about the same or I don't maybe drop 20 milliamps and then that current went down which was weird I added more load resistive load and that current through here went down. Now the real weird twist to this is, if I turn the scope on, we're going to get a look at the waveform. You can see where the scope probe is here, that wire goes into one side of the, the forward, or full, full wave bridge, which one side of those inductive coils 
exhaust from the by feelers is tapped into. The other side of it is open. And I've got the scope probe grounded to the open side. So there's there's an open loop here. There's no loop. Watch what happens. Put my glasses on. I'll just disconnect this for well, look at the waveform first of all. I'm gonna stop it from jiggling there for a minute if I can. Not gonna well, it's not gonna happen anyways. We're getting over 60 volts peak to peak there with an open loop. There's no if I plug this into back into the other side of the uh, full wave bridge, it's still drawing 220, still producing or drawing on the load 20 milliamps. Of course, the waveform's not going to read right because we're not connected to, to ground here, but if we connect this over here back up to ground, we've got a slightly different waveform now. As you can see that, the voltage is slightly, I don't know, that's pretty good. It's still pretty close to 60. It's not going to measure it in the, on that scale. So I'm guessing it's over 60 volts peak to peak. We're on the times 10 scale on the probe. Okay, so that's that's kind of interesting. Anyways, this is the interesting part. When I disconnect this, the current actually drops 10 milliamps. <laughs> That current stays the same, but we have an open loop. This is connected to one side of this bridge, and, and you can see the light's good enough here. That wire comes in there. It, anything, I guess, that's negative going is going to go back this way across here, but then it should be. I don't know, maybe some, maybe one of you guys can figure this out. Let's get this wire out of the way. One wire from the inductive jennies coming into, I would say that's the, I don't know, <laughs> one side of the AC, AC rail on the bridge. Nothing going into the other side. The other end of that generator, inductive generator, goes nowhere. It's an antenna. So watch what happens when I disconnect. Current goes way down as expected. RPMs go down. Generated current goes down. Lights pretty much shutting down. So let's plug it back in. We're back up to the 210, 20 milliamps. Now we're up to 20 milliamps there. And that's kind of a funky waveform that I had going before. It might level itself out once we get our RPMs back up again, but. Connecting our ground back to that open side. Give me a second. Sorry about that. We've got our other waveform back here at 62, 63 volts peak to peak. Back to 220, 20 milliamp draw there, and I'd say that thing is running at about 3 grand, 3100, roughly. So yeah, and those lights, you know, they're running pretty bright. 
I hooked this thing up to 12 volts, which is its uh, recommended power supply voltage. Ran it through a uh, uh, ran it through a current meter to see how much uh, how much current it was drawing, and it uh, came out to about 1.6 1.8 watts. And that's that's pretty close to how bright it, it might have been. A, obviously, a little bit brighter when uh, when I just had it running straight off, you know, a proper power supply, and, and it could draw as much current as it wanted to. So, hmm, I'm kind of thinking I could be measuring the power wrong on this whole section here. I could be getting more than than what I'm actually measuring. Possible. No, because I'm I'm gonna try and plug this fan in now. If you can just kind of if I can steady this. No, I'm not gonna be able to do it. I need a tripod or my boom here. Anyways, I'll see if I can do it with one hand this way. Let's see right here. I'm going to. I'm going to plug this in here. Come on. Okay, now I'm going to disconnect that, hook it up there, and then connect her in there. Come on. It wants to start. Or it started up before, and that was actually running quite well. The current stayed the same, even though I plugged in this extra load. And the current down there went down a bit. I'm not sure what is, what is happening, but... Plugging in more load slowed down the RPMs. But this thing should run. There, there it goes. It's barely running. I don't know if you can see it there, spinning a bit, yeah. That came up a little bit. That went down. Even another 20 milliamps, or 10, sorry. The RPMs went down, the current went down a bit, but the load increased. We added load. So that's an interesting phenomenon there, I have to say, especially that open loop. That wire is an open loop. Okay, that's all I wanted to show you. It's getting too long again here, and I'm signing off. But first, do a selfie.